fella coming in from uh, California who's a friend of mine on Facebook and uh, he wants to visit for a while so it's going to be a short day today. But uh, I've been waiting for the wax to come from the, the uh, 3D place of, the, of this piece the 36 inch uh, uh, wax and I'm still waiting for that so I don't know why that's way back there I'm going to have to put something down in that neck to hold it in place. Come on in! Well, how's it going? Hello, Mr. Lemon! How you doing? Just like on the videos. Yeah, well, I'm videoing now. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. Hear myself on the video. Yeah. And what's your name? Rick Zola. Hi, Rick. Rick's a friend of mine on Facebook and he decided to come by and visit while he was here in Ennis. He has a place over in Whitehall, which is, how far is Whitehall from here? Well, it's on a continental divide. It's, yeah, that's uh, right, that's right. So, maybe 60 miles. Oh, that's not bad. No, it was a nice drive. Came in through Nevada City and Virginia City. Your famous pasta maker. You bet. It works. So now I'm going to put the uh, neckerchief around him. I don't know if they call it a neckerchief, probably a scarf. Or Kerchief. cravat. Yep, yeah. Of some kind. It's still cold. Can I feel a piece? Just a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little stiff, huh? I was fascinated by how you use the lighter fluid, too, to uh, smooth things out. That yeah, it's. Uh, all techniques you picked up just in, doing the, it, in yeah. the couple of years you've been doing this. Huh? Well. <laughs> I used to use a material called Wax Bright. Mm -hmm. has kind of a real strong orange smell to it. And it melts the clay. It's what jewelers use. Mm -hmm. But I was told by the foundry it plays havoc with the uh, rubber molds, so I uh, had to quit using it. Mm. And uh, they said use a lighter fluid or turpentine. I see. And I hate the smell of turpentine, so I decided to use water fluid. Okay, I see what I did. I kind of remember how they tied it. That's... I went back to Baltimore. That's where the uh, outfit was made for this figure. Mm -hmm. I had to have the right depth or width of cuff and the right length of coat and the right uh, structure of the coat. Sure. Even down to the hat. I got the hat. In, period correct. In my van I think right now. <laughs> but uh, to get it right and I used to have the outfit here but I gave it to the client. Mm -hmm. It uh, was made by a guy back east who is probably one of the well his stuff if you put it up on a market after if, if you wanted to sell it he's like the Rembrandt of those type of clothes mm. he in other words he knows what, actors. yeah he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. and uh, I made it for a guy that would have been fit not me <laughs> <laughs> and if it had been made for me I probably would have kept the outfit <laughs> 
doing right now is just doing this scarf. It mm -hmm. sort of wraps around his neck and then tucks down into his vest. Split it. And the vest goes right there. This part won't be seen, but I'll have it anyway. Mm -hmm. Until I started watching your videos, I had no idea of the mechanism for doing your work. Fascinating stuff. And then I was so surprised that on some of them you just cut the middle out of it <laughs> to yeah. get it off of the off of the stand. This one you won't have to do that. No. It's like putting a model airplane together part by part. I see this collar. Got the strap going right across it, so I'm oh yes. Not gonna worry about that too much, but I'm going to. See, I had all the buttons made out of, what I did was I found out that a certain size wooden dowel was perfect size for my buttons. Mm. <laughs> the buttons were a certain inch cross mm -hmm. for that period, you know, the style. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't really know what Lovewell looked like or even what he dressed like, and I just go by what the norms and, mm -hmm. and traditional clothing was at that time. That's my go-by. But there's no portrait of him. That's why I did, when I did a portrait of this guy, I, here's the original clay mm -hmm. that I worked from and, I mean, did. That's the all I have left of that. Oh. I don't understand. Does the foundry destroy your your clay clay when they oh, yeah. when they do it? Because then this one here, I watched you do the the couple. What's the name of that? Oh, one? the uh, mountain man and the Indian woman. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one hasn't been to the foundry. Well, it's been there to get a bid. No, I actually haven't had a bid on it yet either. Oh, okay. I've got to go to the foundry. I think tomorrow or actually tomorrow, okay. to pick up the uh, waxes of this, the 36 inch version, that uh, were just sent back to me by the other 3D place, and uh, that'll help a lot in getting wrinkles and everything like that, right? Like the one I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. All right, just a pause for the cause, so to speak. Um, this video is brought to you by me. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you my uh, seven DVDs that I have available. Uh, this one's on creating a male bust in clay. Uh, this one is a, a supplemental video called uh, Clay to Bronze. It's a tour of the uh, foundry. And uh, but anyway, I've got uh, sweet grass. I've got uh, a life size bust. I got a full size figure of a mountain man and an Indian woman holding a baby. These are the seven that I have. Um, there'll probably be more in the near future. I'm going to be doing one on a horse, but uh, here I'm going to take a break and show you how to purchase these uh, DVDs online. Let's see if I can get it on there. A Day in the Life of a Lemon, block dot blogspot dot com. That's my website, and uh, 
when you get there, this is the, the home page, and you'll see up here at the top right hand column, get my thing there's here. a buy now t uh, tab right there. And what you do is you just click on this uh, little drop down menu, and you got all six of my DVDs uh, mount here. Mask. And then right at the bottom is this clay of bronze, which is the uh, founder tour. And as you can see, it's uh, not as expensive as the ones above. If you don't understand anything on this page, here's a uh, language uh, thing here. Uh, you just drop this uh, menu down and you can select any language uh, that you speak. We'll get back to the uh, uh, sculpture that I'm working on in progress. Uh, you have maybe five more minutes? Yeah. Could I take a picture? Oh, you? certainly. Okay. I'll go ahead and get my camera. All right. Cutting away an area for the ear to go on both sides here. Damn phone gets everywhere. Or not. <laughs> Yeah, too bad I can't make prints on my bronzes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you could take, well, you have lots of pictures of them, and the pictures are excellent. I mean, they look great. Yeah. Although, of course, in, in person, the detail is incredible. Just really, really nice. Thank you. The, uh, the mountain man's hat. Or, well, I don't know what you'd call it. But oh, the fur cap? Yeah, the fur cap. There you go. I watched the video of you doing that, and on a small screen, it's nothing like seeing it in person. Mm hmm. You know, photography just distorts a little bit. Sure. Well, the buttons are coming out pretty even. He learned to feel the size of the clay in your fingers after a while. He get pretty accurate. Not a good thing. Okay. That's far as I'm gonna get today. Alright everybody, that's gonna be it for today. I'll catch it up next time.